to 30 30 and nerdy i'm juliana and today i have Brittany felix here with me and i'm so excited because Brittany and i have been in the same podcasting space for three years because i started three like i'm in my third year of podcasting now and we actually met last year at she podcast live and when we met oh my goodness we like just had a full-on hour to an hour and a half conversation all about ghostly things and supernatural mm -hmm. and just fun stuff that we clicked on that was more than just podcasting and i believe like we missed a thing that we were supposed to go to like a like a workshop or something <laughs> or a meetup and we just ended up continue talking with each other about ghost stuff and then had dinner and and it was just really yeah. fun and I wanted to have Brittany here on this episode because Brittany is a paranormal investigator and I absolutely love that. I think that is so cool. I wanted to have you on to talk ghosty things and just kind of your overall belief in how your belief system changed throughout the years and what you believe in now because I think it's really interesting and would be a really fun halloween -y episode. So I'm going to read your bio real quick for those that do not know you and then after that, you can introduce yourself to others in your own way. That'd be great too. So this is your bio that you gave me. Brittany Felix is in her mid-30s, loves her husband and rescue pup, is obsessed with travel on the TV show Supernatural, literally gets paid to work on podcasts and watch TV shows and movies, and is a real-life ghost hunter for Cheyenne Mountain Paranormal Investigators. So yeah, Brittany, thank you so much for being on here, and I'm just so excited to have you. <laughs> Well, thank you. I'm really excited because, yeah, that conversation we had at She Podcast Live was fantastic. And we both know how crazy life gets. And so we haven't really had a chance to connect since then. And and so, yeah, I'm just excited to continue that same conversation. Yay, I am too. And it's just, it makes me so happy that you said yes to come on this podcast because you are a paranormal investigator. I find that so interesting. And when we talked before, you are like just getting ready to go spend a night you know at a I forget which house it was but it was a haunted house after the three podcast and so I want to know about that but before we get into all of that do you mind sharing with the friends here a little bit more about who you are and like what you do I read your bio but you personally like what would you want to say who you are yeah <laughs> so I I kind of started off going into my 30s or approaching my 30s in a soul-sucking corporate job I was absolutely miserable. I hated every second of it. I changed jobs about every two years because I kept thinking like that job was the problem and the next one would be better. And spoiler alert, it was not. I was the problem. I was not supposed to be there. Uh, and so I got into podcasting as a way to get out of that and and it, it worked. <laughs> I've had that business for going on, well, over six years now. And then with paranormal investigating, I have had experience with that, like since I was a child, like with with ghosts and things like that. And we can get into that if you want. But I've had that interest, like since before I even knew that it was not a normal thing, <laughs> because it was just normal for me as a kid. Like, I mean, not to go the whole Haley Joel Osment way, but I saw dead people. Like it just happened. And as I started getting older, I discovered the the show Ghost Hunters. And I was like, oh my God, this is a real thing. Like people actually do this. Like I had no idea and it completely opened up my world. And so I became immersed in that and, and started reading a bunch of books on it and even auditioned to be in their spinoff show, Ghost Hunters Academy. And uh, I was so close to making it on the show, but I didn't. But that led me to join a local team in Arkansas called Central Arkansas Society for Paranormal Research, which is a mouthful when you say it that way, but the acronym is CASPER, which I think is like the most adorable thing oh ever. Oh my God, I love. <laughs> yes. And then we, we now live in Colorado. So, I mean, like within a week of moving here, I was reaching out to local teams to find somebody to investigate with because it's, I, I love it. Like I, I still would do this full time as well. Like if I, if I could. Yeah. So that's, that's, kind of a quick catch up to speed. <laughs> yeah. And I love that you stay true to yourself as in, I see dead people since I was six years old and <laughs> I want to do this. And now I'm 30 years old and I still see dead people and I still do all this stuff. And it's just so cool because when you're young, it's like a lot of people just kind of hide that part of them so that mm -hmm. they don't, they're like, I don't know what, what the phrase is, but it's like, they don't 
think about it and they kind of block that out of their mind oh so yeah that it's like oh no i don't want to see this i don't believe in this it's all bullshit type of thing but you kept your mind open so I kind of want to start getting into like the ghosty things like that because I find it so interesting that now you're in your mid thirties and you're still doing all of this and you're still seeing everything and being around it all. Like how has your, I want to say belief changed from when you were like six years old till now, like did anything change? Because I looked up the, the website and it's kind of like you try to disprove some of ghostly activity with scientific research and things like that yes. as well is that correct so how did you go from like a hundred percent believe to i'm not sure i'm kind of a skeptic but i want to see if this is true if that makes sense like yeah what's that like for you so it is interesting because when i was younger it did ju- like it was just normal like i I saw my grandfather the night of his funeral. I was the first, well, actually my great grandfather. And I was the first great grandchild that like, didn't get to know him before he got sick. All of my other like cousins and my older brother, like they all knew him and had memories with him. And I didn't have that. And I was the first one. And so the night of his funeral, he actually, I was, I was young. I don't even know what age, but he came into my room and he read me a little mermaid book, (laughs) read me to sleep. And so like he formed that memory with me and that bond with me. And like now saying it as an adult, I'm like, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. (laughs) So like, it's still really hard for me to even like believe my own experiences. But as a child, you're just like, because my mom came into my room. I had just like, my room was a mess as a kid. And I had just cleaned up everything. And I was devastated because I put my favorite Little Mermaid book at the bottom of my toy box. And I was a spoiled little brat as a kid. So like I had a ton of toys. And, and I was, I was so sad because like, I didn't want to dig everything out. And then like, he came into my room and like, there was the book just like out and he read it to me. And then the next morning it was laying on the floor by my bed when my mom came in to wake me up and, but everything else was still in my toy box. And like, I had had a raging hissy fit because my book was like buried in the toy box. So like, she knew that it was not supposed to be laying on the ground with nothing else moved. And so it's one of those things where it's like, there's, I, I find it difficult to believe my own stories, but I also can't disprove them either. And so as a child, you just believe it. It's, it's just what it is. I had a grandmother who waited, she had lupus and she was very sick and she waited for me to pass until after I was born. Like she wanted to meet me. That was like her last thing before she passed away. So she waited to meet me and then she died just a couple months later, but I like throughout my childhood and this, I don't even remember. My mother and my other grandmother told me this, like I used to talk about her all the time and like, as if she was there, like just, and, and I would tell stories and talk about like her friends, like by name. And they would be like, how do you know this? They're like, where did you hear that? And I was like, oh, grandma Judd told me like, no big deal. Like we just had a chit chat and she told me, well, she's dead. So that is not how that's supposed to go. (laughs) So like, there are just things that like you don't question as a child, but as you get older, you are kind of taught to question everything, or at least you should be, you know, you have to form your own opinions. And the older I got slash get kind of the more skeptical I am. And I don't know why that is. I, I try to remain open to things. And it's honestly, it's, it's kind of ever evolving because like, I believe things now that 10 years ago, I would think sounded crazy. And, and it's just, it's, it's really, really weird because when you're in the paranormal industry, you're meeting all of these people who, you know, they're psychics, they're mediums, they're sensitives, they're empaths. And then there, I mean, there are complete skeptics. You have atheists who still somehow believe in the paranormal and like the spiritual realm. So like, it's just this really complex thing to try and understand. And like science helps me a little bit, try to make sense of something that like, I don't think we're supposed to really fully understand to begin with. And so that's kind of where I'm at now when I go on these investigations, like I use equipment and I like data to back me up. Like I, I have personal experiences, like I can get a bad feeling from a room, but I, and I can say, I feel a cold spot. Like, I think it just got colder here, but I want a hard number to back me up. I want data. I want, you know, some motion sensor thing to go off when nobody's around it. When I have that bad feeling, I want to see the temperature on my temp gun drop 10 degrees all of a sudden. Like I need that, that data to back me up. So I don't just like readily believe things anymore. Even, even when I'm experiencing it myself, I still 
question everything now. And so that's, that's how it's changed. Instead of questioning nothing, I question everything. It's so interesting because, yeah, like you said, when you're younger, you're more susceptible. Is that the right word? You're more susceptible. Yeah. Sus sus <laughs> when you're younger, you're more susceptible. Oh that God. word. Yep. I don't, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like say it, but it's hard for me to say it. You're more yeah. open. I'm to say open. It's easier. You're more open to that type of thing. And then when you get older, you, you start questioning more and like you grow up and you're like, wait, what is this really? And and I think it's so cool though that you go out there and you still try to get a sense of it and you still do investigations and you have, you know, feelings, but you want the real data. And I think a lot of people miss that when they're like ghost hunting and things like that. They're like, I just want to see a ghost. You right. know, I want to see it with my own two eyes and all these things like that. And you actually you know, you may see something here and there, but you're like, but was that legit? Or was that right. just something in the wind? Like, Right. Well, uh, and with investigating, about like 95% of it can be explained. Like there is, you know what I mean? Like if you're having a bad feeling, it's because you're in a place that has a lot of like high EMF. So there's a very high electromagnetic field, which actually can physically affect you and give you feelings of dread. It can make you nauseous. It can make you lightheaded. All of those things for somebody who doesn't understand that they get in there and they're like oh i have a bad feeling something's making me feel sick i need to get out of here there's something negative in here well i mean there is but like it's literally you know like electricity entering your body like it's not healthy for you and so most of the time it can be explained but the reason i do it is for like that five percent of the time where i have absolutely no explanation there is no reason that the thing that is happening at the moment should be happening and that's like what makes it all worth it so that's a great segue because I want to ask you, what was that 5% that you saw that you're like, there's, there's no way like this is actually like legit. Like what, what's a story that you have that you're like, this is a hundred percent real. <laughs> so this kind of goes in with changing beliefs because up until last year, when I actually, was it last year, or earlier this year, it all kind of blends together, honestly. But an investigation that I was on, we were investigating an old, it's like the oldest firehouse in Denver, Colorado. And it's now like a museum, like a firefighter's museum. And we were there doing our tour, which is what's so funny about all of this. Like you see a lot of these shows where things happen, you know, at 3 a.m. and it's quiet and it's dark and it's spooky. And like, that's not when this stuff happens. This stuff happens like when you're getting set up and you have no equipment going. Like the most always will. <laughs> right, right. So prior to this investigation, you know, you talk about, like you hear people talk about full body to apparitions, which means it is somebody like standing right in front of you that looks exactly like a real person. You cannot, like you think that they are a real person. You have a full blown conversation with them. You might even interact and touch them and then they're gone. And like, there was no person actually there. And when you actually saw that at the, at the firehouse or? Sort of. So I, I would hear people share these experiences and my mind just could not like wrap my head around it. Because even when my grandpa read, read me to sleep when I was a child, he, he was not a full bodied apparition. He was just kind of like this white figure. And so like people would share these experiences and I, I like, I don't try to discredit somebody else's experience. Like I didn't have it. I don't know. It's just hard for me to believe it. So I'm like, that's, that's great. Like, that's awesome for you that you have that experience. You know, I just, for me personally, I have a hard time believing that that's a possibility. So we were at this museum and they were giving us a tour, you know, just showing us around the building because that's what we normally do. Like they normally give us a tour. So we know where we're going, where the hot spots are, where we want to set up our equipment. And then we go back and, and then start the process of setting up. So we were on that initial tour and it was myself and two other people and we were walking it's kind of hard to explain without like being in this room, but we were in the locker room for the firefighters and there was a kitchen off of one side of the locker room. And then there was a hallway to a bathroom off of the other side. And they were like parallel to each other. So as we were walking into the kitchen, I just so happened to like glance over and I saw, I saw somebody who was like all dressed in black. It looked like they had a backpack on, but I just saw like the back half of them walk into that hallway. And that hallway only goes to the bathroom. Like there's no emergency exit. There's literally nowhere else to go except that bathroom. And I didn't even think about it because we had two other guys, team members who were kind of dressed similarly. Um, and I was like, I just looked over, saw it and was like, oh, that's one of the other guys, no big deal. 
And then like, I started to go into this other room and I was like, wait a minute, like they just left to go to a different part of the building. Like they shouldn't be over here. So I was like, well, let me just go check this really quick. And so I walked over there and there was nobody in the hallway and nobody in the bathroom. And so like, I saw an actual person walk down that hallway when there was nobody there. So like, and even still now, like, it's hard for me to believe that, but I saw it with my own eyes. Like I can't, I can't discredit that. Yeah, because you saw. I don't it have hallucinations. Like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> you're like I saw it, and they thought it was someone, but it wasn't anyone because they were all elsewhere. So who the hell is this person? Right, and right. Then someone like break in? What is this? Or no? Oh, we've knows? definitely, <laughs> we've definitely thought that too. Like I had an experience where I was home alone, and I called the cops because I thought someone broke into yeah. my house. I remember you telling me this story when we first met. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> like that's so scary. Yeah, I mean, it is. And that's the thing. Like, I'm not scared of ghosts. I'm I'm scared of people. So like when I think there's someone actually in my home, especially if I'm home alone, that scares me far more than any ghost investigation I've ever been on. But we actually just had a thing happen like two weeks ago here at my house because I've this is kind of another thing. I've had something I've had stuff happen everywhere I've ever lived. I think my grandma might like still be with me or somebody's with me. But so my my dog passed away a few months ago and like we are like soul bonded like she means more to me than most people in my life and I know that that sounds awful but it's just true and like I've had a really hard time with it and so we had her cremated and we had like a little paw print made and we have a paw print from a a previous dog that we also had and we have them sitting on a shelf so it's like her urn and then like the two paw prints sitting in front of it like facing out towards the room same direction and my husband and I were like sitting at our dining room table, which is right by the shelf. And he was like, oh, I've been meaning to ask you, like, did you move that? And I looked over at it and her paw print, which is like high up, it's probably, I would say close to like chest height. So like, it's not going to get like bumped by my other dog's tail or something like that. And it was like rotated like a full hundred degrees, like facing a completely different direction towards the wall. So like not anything that like we would do, it didn't make like it's, you know what I mean? Like it's decor, like you want to see it. Like we wouldn't face it towards the wall and like it, it's kind of on, it's on a little stand and it's heavy and it's awkward. So like if you move it, like you have to be really careful because it could tip over. So like, I don't know how this thing literally just like shifted itself like a full hundred degrees. And there's no wind, there's nothing. No, no, no. And nothing else on the shelf moved. Like, and then there's stuff on every shelf, even the ones below it, like where my dog could accidentally touch it with her tail. Nothing else was moved. Nobody else had been in the house that we were aware of because like just a few days prior, like it, it was fine. And it had only been my husband and I in the home. Like we hadn't had any guests. We don't have kids. So like I have zero explanation and he wouldn't, he wouldn't do it, especially not that. Like he, he wouldn't play a joke like that on me, period. But, like, he especially wouldn't do it with anything relating to her because he knows, like, how, how, like, emotionally charged I still am about all that. So, like, I have absolutely no explanation for that. And, like, a lot of people – and here comes maybe the beliefs. A lot of people are like, oh, well, she's just, like, letting you know that she's there with you. And, like, I don't believe that. Yeah. <laughs> and so then, you know, I have no logical explanation and my belief doesn't really explain it. So I I don't know. I don't know. So it's it's those times where it just makes it interesting. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Like, like I'm kind of one of those people where I'd say, oh, she's with you. Like, it was her saying hi. It's a sweet sentiment, but, but like, then my brain goes to, because it's, like, up chest height. So, like, what, did the mic, like, a ghost dog levitate off the ground and, like, swat (laughs) it with her paw? You know what I mean? Like, that's where my brain goes. And so, like, which does not make logical sense to me. And, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe... Which is where you have these conflicting beliefs. It's like, why do I think a person could do that, but not an animal? You know what I mean? Like, even my own beliefs around this stuff change constantly and are confusing to me. And that's why I do like that hard data, because, like, I can't question that. You know what I mean? Like, I have I have the proof right in front of me. And so when it's when you get into these other little, like, softer sciences that it just gets a little mind-bending. You should have a camera by that area so that the next time it happens, you can see if it's like moving on its own or something. Right. But then, well, then course, it would never happen. Like, right. that's the thing. And then the it's thing, so too, pretty. like, oh, uh, or it would never happen, or the like the, the equipment will get destroyed or something crazy <laughs> like that, where you just are like, I was recording. 
recording this, but it didn't save. Why didn't it right. save? Right. It moved. Or the camera this? shifts, you know, like, yeah. and then it's not on it anymore. It, yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff happens. <laughs> it really does. Usually, they usually it dies. Like that is, I mean, yeah. that's a notorious thing on a paranormal investigation. Like, if you ever want to get a ghost hunter a gift, get them batteries because, like, we go through batteries like no other. I mean, because again, uh, my belief is that spirits are are energy, and they require energy to interact, and so they drain whatever energy sources around them, which can be people, but usually it's, you know, actual energy batteries. <laughs> wow. That's so interesting. I didn't realize that it was actual batteries, but I guess it makes sense because of the Ghostbusters show, like they would train the batteries and stuff of things. Yeah. And so that's, like, like, oh, that's okay. a real thing. Like that, yeah. that is one of the few things on those TV shows that really happens. Like, <laughs> I mean, every ghost hunter in their kit has just oodles of spare batteries because like you're going to go through them if if it's you know an active place and i mean you you always start an investigation with fresh batteries and every piece of equipment everything's fully charged you have brand new batteries like i have bags of like partially used batteries because you don't reuse them like you put in new ones every single time because it's the proof you know when your flashlight dies 10 minutes in you could say these are brand new batteries like there's no reason that these should be dead already so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's so, those things are so interesting and crazy. Like I've had some experience myself too, that I kind of want to mm-hmm. share with you because I want to know like from your experience and expertise, if like this could be real or if it could be made up because literally. Well, it's not made up. It really happened. It's true. just, yeah. But it's just like, it's okay. So <laughs> I had a few, I have a few different stories and one of them is wild to me because I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't right. looking. I think I might have told you this too in the podcast, but I'm going to say it again. I have a um, terrible memory, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we, so my family and I were in Utah and we stayed at the Ben Laman Hotel and that hotel is notorious for being haunted. Like there's so many stories, there's so many deaths that happen there and it's kind of a creepy hotel when you go in and you're like, oh, shoot, why is this so creepy looking? Like, I don't understand it. It's because it's older. And so when we went in, our room that we had was really strange. Basically, the bedroom was there. And then in the living room, there was a window leading out to the hallway. And you're like, okay. that is weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, why is this thing? And they had curtains for us, but we're just like, we didn't feel comfortable. My dad's like, oh no, like I don't feel comfortable having me to sleep in the living room because my sister and I were going to sleep in the living room and they're going to sleep in the bedroom. So we go downstairs and are like, hey, is there any other room that doesn't have a window looking into the hallway? Like we'd like to change our room. And so it took the people in the desk a little bit to have a spare room for us. And the only spare room available was like, one of the top rooms on the top floor that had to be approved by manager. And we're like, why? Okay. So like, we had to wait a little bit. We didn't know what was going on. We're just tired. We're like, we just want to go to sleep. So we go up to this room and it was a pretty nice room. Like it was, you know, two separate areas. There's a living room and there's a bedroom and a bathroom. Mm-hmm. And there's like another adjacent, like apartment looking thing with like another bedroom and another bathroom. So it's kind of like a pretty big area, right? Yeah. So... My sister and I are in one room and my parents are in another room. And I just remember like, sleep, like having such a hard night sleeping. And you know that feeling when you try to go to sleep and you look over at a window and it's bright because of like outside lights and you're like, all right, whatever, well, I'm going to go back to sleep. Well, I kind of woke up again and I looked at the window and there was something standing in front of the window. Like it looked like a bride figure. It kind of had a veil on. It was like a shadow. I kind yeah. of looked at it, but I was like half asleep, half days. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> and I got kind of nervous and I like flipped around because the bed was closer to a wall. So like mm-hmm. I flipped around, like facing my sister and I was just kind of like looking in there. I'm like, I think she's asleep. So she probably won't be awake, but I'm like, just go to sleep, just go to sleep. Like there's <laughs> nothing there. And then the next day I wake up and you know, we kind of were all quiet and things like that. <laughs> and 
you know, this is my, this is what I remember. My family remembers it differently, but I'm like, is this place, like, what is this place? Like, where were we staying? And so my dad's like, don't tell your sister, but I think this place was haunted. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> and so I, I, now you tell me. I, right. So I, I remember looking it up and I'm like, reading through this. And I was like, wait, what? And it, it was, I was just kind of like tired. So I couldn't really understand it. Yeah. And we all go down to breakfast and all of us are just quiet. We don't say a word to each other. My mom's like, we gotta get out of this place. We're not gonna stay here any longer. Hmm. So we're in the car. And this is the best part. My sister goes, you know, the place we stayed at was haunted. And I look at her and I'm like, what do you mean? And my mom and dad kind of stop and are like, what do you mean? And she says, yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw a spirit by the window last night. And I'm like, you saw her too? <laughs> I was like, no, because, because, you know, when you're like growing up and, and it's just kind of like your siblings kind of are, you know, they like to joke with you and be like, oh, I'm just saying that for shits and giggles. But I'm like, wait, right. are you seriously, you seriously saw it? Because I, I saw that too. Like, no lie. Like, no cap, like no joke. Like, I saw that. And my mom was like, yeah, you know, something really strange happened to me. She's like, I was sleeping and all, all I kept hearing all night was mom. Like someone was yelling, mom, mom, mom. And mm. my dad's like, yeah, like I couldn't go to sleep. I felt like something was in front of me, like a fly or something. And he kept like squatting something away. Like, come on, get away. Like leave. Right. So I look it up and apparently we stayed in the room where there is a bride who passed away from drowning herself in a tub on her wedding night. Mm. And what we saw was the bride because of the veil, like it made sense. Right. And my parents were in the room where her son passed away because he committed suicide from trying, from see, finding his mom in, in the situation she was in. And was wow. really distraught and upset. And, and this story is literally on like the website and there's other stories I was listening to, Lights Out podcast, and they had the story on there as well. I'm like, oh my God, I loved it. I saw the ghost. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> like, now I'm freaking away. And they had like so many other ghost stories from that hotel, but that was the one that my family and I personally witnessed. And it's crazy because all of us witnessed something at that time. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm getting goose, like, I'm getting like, Oh, like all of us witnessed something at that time and it's we like looked it up and we confirmed it and we had no right. idea going in right no idea my dad might have like looked up a little history but didn't really put the two and two together and it was like oh, well and didn't share it with you two yeah that's that's what i remember like i could be remembering something differently because my memory is really shitty too but right. like huh. Like, how do you explain that? You know what I mean? How do you explain everyone having something happen to them that's kind of paranormal and none of us were looking for it? My sister and I saw the bride. Like, because right. I remember I was looking at the window and I was kind of like half asleep, but it was blocked. And then I turned around and I looked again and it was clear. The black image wasn't there anymore, but it was right. It was like shadowy figure so i didn't see any details just kind of like an outline of things it was kind of like a bright outline for me yeah. but it was just it was a weird experience and it, the fact that my sister saw it too like my family sometimes doesn't like to talk about it too much because they're like that was such a weird <laughs> night <laughs> like we don't understand <laughs> what happened but it's a story that's brought up consistently because it, it's you know we don't know how to explain it right right it's crazy yeah, well, what I think leads credence to the story is, and again, I mean, you did say, like, you could maybe be misremembering it, but, I mean, I'll, there are a lot of investigators out there who prefer to go into places blind, you know, is, is how we call it. They want to go in blind. They don't want to know anything about it because our minds can play tricks with us. And so, like, if you go into that, knowing that there's a story of a bride, if you wake up in the middle of the night, your eyes are a little... A little hazy, you know, I mean, you're, you're half out of it. You might see something and then like your, your brain turns it into the bride because that's what you're expecting to see. But if you go in not knowing anything about that, 
and you have an experience that is later corroborated, you know, with other stories that you didn't know, that's definitely like, that's not your brain playing a trick on you because you, your brain doesn't know what trick to play. Your brain doesn't know because it, it wants to make sense of things. So there's something called pareidolia, which is where a lot of like, if you look at a cloud and you see a face, that's pareidolia. It's your brain trying to make sense of abstract things, things that don't make sense. They your brain wants order. Your brain wants to understand what's happening and, and recognize things as things that are not threats. So, and a lot of times, like if you look into old mirrors that, you know, are starting to go bad, like people see faces in that, like it's, it's not paranormal. There's a scientific explanation. So in this case, had you known prior, your brain might see a weird shadow in the middle of the night because a car went by or something. I mean, you're really high, you know, obviously without being in the room, I can't say, but your brain would be like, oh, maybe that's the bride because like that would explain it. That's what this is. It's fine. I know that this is supposed to be here. We're good. But if you don't know that going in, like your brain doesn't have that knowledge to pull from to try and use that as an explanation for what's happening, to try and convince you that you know what's going on. So that's that's definitely interesting. Now, with everyone having experiences, that can kind of go both ways. Like if you have people having the same exact experience, that's like, that's golden. That's what you want, which is why like, at least with our team, basically nobody goes anywhere on their own. Nobody, like, unless the situation very specifically calls for it, we always do things in pairs because we want somebody to be able to verify someone else's story. So if it happens to one person, we want it to happen to two because then it, it's not your brain playing tricks on you. Like your and your sister brains are not going to play the same trick at the same exact time. So if you have something happen that's the exact same, it's more likely that it's that it really happened. Now, with everyone having experiences and negative things, you can go back to old buildings do have bad wiring a lot of the times. And so it can be seeping out some of that into the room, which then can, like I, you know, like I mentioned before, cause nausea, cause feelings of dreads, can actually cause hallucinations. But again, you're not going to both hallucinate the same thing. And so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, it's another one of the situations where you can't, you don't necessarily have proof of it, but you can't disprove it either. Like, it's just, it's something that happened to you and your family and you kind of have to take it and, and take from the experience what you want. Like, if you find it unnerving, you can maybe find an explanation for it. You know what I mean? To kind of like help yourself feel better. If you think it's interesting, then you can find comfort in the fact that like, there's not really a way to disprove it. Like, so that's what makes all of this. That's why there's there, there's no definitive answer on ghosts because you can really interpret things however you want to, to fit in with like what you want that moment to be, which is what frustrates me about it, which is why I like the hard data. But yeah, I mean, you can't take somebody else's experience away. You had that happen. I, regardless of what any explanation might say, that's what happened to you. Yeah. I really like what you're talking about, how, oh my gosh, it's just, this is just so cool because I love talking to you about ghosty things and hearing your like scientific brain go <laughs> off and it's like, oh man, it, it's true because it is an experience that happened to me and my sister had the same experience. So it's like having two people there of course, it's going to be our truth, you know? Right. right. And it's just so interesting how our brains work and develop over time. And it's really interesting how, you know, you were saying when you were younger, you you kind of saw your your grandfather in like this type of white light. And now you saw this other dude that looked just like a person. And, well, and I had I had another experience in my same household where, and you'll hear this mentioned quite a bit in the paranormal field, where there was a figure that was blacker than black. Like there was a shadow in my mom's room that was like, it, there were no lights on the room, so it was already dark. And then it went darker. Like, how do you get darker than dark? Like, you can't get blacker than black when it comes to a shadow, but it happens. Okay. And there's really no way to explain it. So I'm getting like really goosebumps right now because I think I saw something like that too like I okay so oh my gosh I have to cut that part out <laughs> <laughs> no because this part is like I really like to have goosebumps so one night I was in an apartment in South Carolina so this wasn't necessarily my home I was kind of like visiting I'm like freaking out right now <laughs> 
because what happened was I was sleeping and I was kind of in that drowsy moment again. So I kind of woke up and I looked up at the fan and it was kind of that same scenario from the ghost where it was like a light that I could see coming through like the window and mm-hmm. I see the fan going. I'm like, all right. And then I close my eyes and I open them again and literally in front of my face i am not kidding you was a black figure looking into me like this like like this blocking Mm -hmm. the fan so i don't see any of the fan movement going on and i see into the space and it had six dark holes going down like this Hmm. so it was like an oval shaped face yeah six figures and it was black and like everything just kind of Instead of light, it was dark. And when you said right. that, I was like, oh my God, that freaked me out. Because I saw the thing and I, I saw it and then I closed my eyes again. And I woke up and I started crying. I was like, what the fuck? Was, like, I had a, a sort of a panic attack because I'm like, what right. did I just see? Like, was that just my imagination? And I knew it was something that wasn't natural because my emotion towards it was so raw and so legit to where like I started crying. Because I was so, so scared. Right. So could you move while this was going on? It wasn't sleep paralysis. Okay. It wasn't sleep paralysis? It wasn't because I heard this, I heard the thing about sleep paralysis, but it was not that because I've never had that in my life. You can only, it, it can happen only once ever. Wait, really? So you think that might yes. have been it? I don't know. I mean, again, I'm, I'm not there in that experience. Usually with sleep paralysis, you are actually paralyzed for a second. So, like, could you, do you remember if you could move your body had you wanted to? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah? it was a few years. It was probably, like, six years ago, but I'm pretty sure because I remember moving my head. And yeah. Like that. But it was, like, super close to me, so it's, like. Yeah, so it, my, I, so there is the, the situation where I was talking about earlier. That's kind of what happened. And it could have been sleep paralysis, but I, I I'm pretty certain I was not asleep at the time. Like I, it happened before I fell asleep, but you know, the logical part of my brain is like, eh, maybe you were asleep and you didn't realize it. So I tried to dismiss it away, especially because it was a very negative experience. It's one of the yeah. few times I have ever, like I started crying afterwards and like, I literally go run into these abandoned buildings. Like it doesn't really phase me, <laughs> yeah. but I, and I was, I was paralyzed. Like I couldn't move. I couldn't call out to my boyfriend. I literally just laid there and was just crying for probably 30 or 40 seconds. So that's entirely possible, but, and it, it can be sleep paralysis and it can, it doesn't have to be like your entire body. It can, ma- it can show up in different ways, but usually there is that sense of panic. There usually is a sense of anxiety, a little bit of a panic attack that goes with it. And I am not an expert in this particular thing by any means. I just know my co-host for my like hobby podcast where we kind of talk about this stuff. She does have it and she's had it for years. Like, and it happens fairly frequently to her. And so like she shared a lot of her experiences with me and she shared about it on the podcast. So sometimes she's like fully paralyzed. Sometimes she's not. Uh, sometimes she can talk. Sometimes she can't. So it, it does change shapes, but usually it almost always comes with that, that feeling of panic, terror. Like it's, it's a scary thing and it, it manifests like the actual form can look a million different ways. So what I would say is if it makes you feel better to think that it was sleep paralysis, that could be a possible explanation. But if you want this to be an experience that you had, you can know that like nobody can tell you that it for for sure was. So again, it's just all about how you want to, how you want to handle these experiences. Like, because I can't, I can't sit here and say like, no, that was sleep paralysis. Don't worry about it. Because like, I wasn't there. I didn't go through it. You did. You know how it felt in that moment. But I think it helps a lot of people to take comfort in the fact that there might be a possible explanation for it. And I like that. And I really like how you kind of took what I had experienced and said, oh, it could be this too. Because I didn't even think about sleep paralysis at the time. Right. But now what the feelings that I had and stuff like that, like it makes way more sense. But it was just weird because I never had that at all in my whole entire life. Right. And that's you know? so that my experience is the only time it ever happened before and the only time it's ever happened since it doesn't have to be like it can be so when what the deal is with sleep paralysis is like you something has woken you up when you're still in your REM state of sleep which is when you are not like you're supposed to be asleep that's your deepest state of sleep so your brain is awake but your body is not 
And that's why your body is paralyzed because like your brain's awake, but your body is still fully in that REM state. But as you start to come out of it, or depending on how far out of it you were before you woke up, that depends on like the level of paralysis and stuff. So it, it just depends on, and I kind of lost my train of thought a little bit, but like, (laughs) it just depends on like what woke up in that moment. So like, it could have been that somebody made a loud noise in the other room, which kind of like jolted you awake, but you're, you were in a position where you could wake up. So like there is a scientific explanation for like why that happens and it may never happen again because, you know, like it's that one instance where you got woken up when you weren't supposed to and every other time your body wakes up normally. So it doesn't have to be like a chronic thing. It can be a one-off thing, but also it could be paranormal. <laughs> that's, that's the thing with all of this is it we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's awesome. I, I, I love being able to talk to you and to kind of hear your experiences. And so my last question for you for this episode is, what is one advice that you wish you had before turning 30 about being 30? I think I, (laughs) there's like a million different things running through my head, but I think I would have liked to have known that like, And this is kind of the same thing with the changing beliefs. Like when I was a kid, I was so hard headed and like in what I wanted in life. And like, I had all these big dreams and I was going to do all these amazing things. And as I got into my mid twenties, like, you know, you go to college and you get a normal job and life starts to beat you into submission. And like, you just go along with it. And it took me getting into my thirties to finally realize like, this is, I don't know if I can cuss on here, but like, it's bull crap. Like it's bull crap. We only have one life. It's ours. Why do anything for anybody else? Because I say we should do, you know, we should do it. So that's what I wish I would have maybe realized a little bit sooner instead of spending 10 years in corporate, like just trying the next job and the next job and the next job and literally getting to the point where like I was daydreaming about getting into a car accident on my way to work just so I didn't have to go into the office that day. Like, I wish I would have known it didn't have to get that bad before I could make a change. We don't have to do things just because people say that we should, just because it's what's considered the normal path in life. Like, if you have something you want to do, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else, you know, go do it. Like, just just do what you want to do and do what makes you happy and screw everyone else. Like, I don't care that I'm a 36-year-old woman who is obsessed with the TV show and Harry Potter and, like, loves all my nerd stuff and I go to fan conventions. Like, I don't care what anyone else has to say about that. that. (laughs) And it's like, it's so nice and freeing to just be who I want to be and say, like, if you think that this is dorky or you think that this is weird or immature, like, that's your problem, not mine. I'm having a great time. And I wish it, I wish I would have known that in my 20s so that it didn't take me quite so long to get here. I absolutely love that so much. I agree with you about how when you're older, you start to not care, not give a shit about what people think, and you just love the things that you love. And it really shows. It's just, it's, it's free. It's definitely free. It is. It is. It is. Like, I, I, I don't know. And I get that a lot of people can't come from that. Like, I grew up the youngest of, of four. I have three older brothers. I've been in heavily, like, male-dominated fields where I've had to really assert myself. And so, like, I get that that probably comes a little bit easier to me than it does to other people that like, I'm just going to be me unapologetically. And like, you're going to have to adjust if you want to still be in my orbit. Like, if you don't, that's cool. Bye. Like, there's the door. But like, if you want to be in my life, like you're not, this is, this is who I am. And you're going to have to hear me geek out about the TV shows that I love and like, you know, getting to do all these things at conventions and like, going to like this weekend, I'm going to a Dracula ballet. Like, I'm so excited about it. You know what I mean? Like, in December, I'm doing like a movie screening for The Princess Bride with Carrie Elways. Like, I'm going to do nerd shit and I'm going to love it. And like, <laughs> you can be excited for me or you can leave. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I, I heard about the Jack of the Ballet because there's one coming to Vegas too. And I'm yeah. like, huh, I kind of want to see that. <laughs> well, I'll let you know how it goes. I'm going this Saturday. <laughs> yes, let me know. And it's, it's so exciting. And we're friends on Facebook. So seeing you do all of the fun things and, and meeting with supernatural guys and like doing conventions and things like it's definitely inspiring, and I appreciate you being on a on a yeah, can't speak today unapologetically you. So thank you for for being you and being amazing and being on the show today. Well, thank you for having me on, and I appreciate that you appreciate it. Like we need more people who are just willing to take people as they are, and like willing to let people 
enjoy the things they enjoy. Like, you know, if you want to like pumpkin spice, like pumpkin spice. Who cares if somebody calls you basic? Like, like the things that you want to like. It drives me nuts when people try to like regulate how other people find joy in yeah. what is normally a crazy, miserable world. Like, if they're not hurting anyone else, just like let them have their fun and let them enjoy the things they want to enjoy. Let them find happiness where they find it and focus on like figuring out what your happiness is and going after it and not letting anyone stop you. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Brittany, for your time and for being on here today. Well, thank you. This was super fun. Hey, friends. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Please take a moment to follow and review this podcast so it could reach others. Also, if you leave a review, I'll be sharing your review in the next episode. Lastly, if you want to be part of this growing podcast to chat about your life, your profession, passions, or if you have advice that you wish you had at 30, please sign up at the link provided in the show notes. I would love to have you as a guest on the show. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.